Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Fayetteville Church of Christ, second and third grade Bible class. I hope you're all well and safe. I miss you terribly. I miss our Bible class time together. And I hope that you are praying and studying at home while we go through this together. <clears throat> to the parents, I want to let you know that at the end of our lesson, we're gonna have some activities to do. And if you'd like to stop now and pause the video and go to our website, fcoc.com, go to the Ministries tab, and then go to the Bible class material. Under that, you'll see a folder. It's called the Tower of Babel. If you open that up, you can print out the material that we're gonna be working on today. Um, you're gonna want scissors, probably some crayons, um, and maybe some blank paper to work on as well. So kids, make sure your parents get those for you so that we can work on that when we get to that point. We always begin our Bible class with looking at who God is. This is going to be the last lesson in this quarter, so this will be the last time that we'll go over this and we'll begin something new next Sunday. So remember we talked about God is and who God is. Remember we've talked about God is real. God is invisible. We can't see him, but he's there. God is love. God is eternal. That means he lives forever, does not have a beginning, and does not have an end. God is our Father. God is spirit. He has doesn't have flesh and blood. God is everywhere. The word is omnipresent. God is all-powerful, omnipotent, omnipotent, and God is all-knowing, omniscient. Okay, before we begin, we always practice our Bible facts, don't we? And so we're going to keep doing that so you can remember them from home. Okay, how many books are in the Bible? Remember? Yes, 66. How many Testaments are there? There's two Testaments. Can you name them? Old Testament and New Testament. How many days of creation were there? Well, we've talked about this in class. Remember, there's six days, but it took a total of seven. Remember what God did on the seventh day? He rested. He wasn't tired. He just quit working. About how many men wrote the Bible? Remember that? There were 40 men, approximately, that wrote the Bible. About how many years did it take to write the Bible? This is a tough one, but I know y'all remember this number. 1,600 years to write the Bible. How many Old Testament books are there? Can you name them? We're going to. There's 39 Old Testament books. What is the first and last book of the Old Testament? You probably know the first one, Genesis, but can you remember the last one we talked about? Genesis and Malachi are the first and last books of the Old Testament. Do you know who wrote the first five books of the Old Testament? Sometimes they're called the Pentateuch. You remember? Moses did. Yes, Moses wrote the first five books. What are the first five books of the Old Testament called? Remember that? There's three things that they're called by in the scriptures. The Pentateuch is one. They're called the books of Moses, or they're called the books of law. You'll hear all those references to those books. So let's talk about what are the five books of law. Can you name them? Let's do it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Very good. What does Genesis cover? Does anybody remember what it covers? From creation to the Israelites in Egypt. What does Genesis mean? What does that word mean? Good. It means beginning. Yes. What does Exodus mean? And it sounds kind of like the name of the book itself, Exodus. What does it mean? The going out or the exiting of the Israelites. What does Exodus cover? Does anybody remember that? What does Exodus cover? Let's think. The Israelites exit Egypt. Good. What book is named for the tribe of Levi? Think about it, Levi, Levi. What book is that? Good, it's Leviticus, yes. And that's the book about the priests. 
What does Le Leviticus cover? Do you remember that? It's laws for priests and worship in Israel. That's what we learn in the book of Leviticus. What does the book of Numbers cover? Hmm, that should be easy because the word is in the answer, isn't it? What does the book of Numbers cover? Numbering the Israelites twice. That's correct. What does Deuteronomy mean? This might be hard and you might not remember it because we haven't talked about it in a while. Deuteronomy, Deutero 2. Let's look. The second law. That's what Deuteronomy means. What does Deuteronomy cover? You might remember this from Sunday night. What does it cover? Remember repeating the law before entering Canaan. So after the books of law, there are 12 books of history. Let's see if we can remember them and name them. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Good. There are 12 books of history. Then there are five books of poetry. You remember what poetry is? Pretty writing, writing that makes you feel something. Um, that's what the five books of poetry are. And they start with Job. Remember? Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Now, the five books of the major prophets. And this one's where we begin to slow down, don't we? Five books of major prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. I hope you're saying these at home. Twelve books of minor prophets. And if you can sing them, you can do that too. What are they? Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Very good. Now, how many books are in the New Testament? Remember the Second Testament? How many books are there? 27. Good. Try to beat me to the answer if you can. What is the first and last book of the New Testament? Let's think about it. What is it? Matthew's the first, Revelation's the last book of the New Testament, and the last book of the whole Bible. How many gospel accounts are there? Can you remember? Remember, there's only one gospel, but there are four accounts of that one gospel. What do the four gospel books cover? We might say, who do they cover? The life of Christ. We learn all about Jesus in the four gospel books. There are four gospel books, so let's name them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Good. Now, there's one New Testament book of history. Does anybody remember what that is? It's the book of what? Acts. Acts in the um, New Testament. And then there are 13 letters from Paul. Let's name them. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon. And then there are more letters, but we don't know, we know who some of them are from. We don't know who Hebrews was from, but these letters are different than Paul's letters. And let's look and see what they are. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude, what's the last book? It's a book about, of prophecy, and that book is Revelation. Very good. I hope you're studying and remembering these facts until we meet again, and we'll go over them when we meet again. Okay, we've been talking in our Bible class about first things. Of course, we're in the book of Genesis. And so remember what we talked about, the first sin. Do you remember what the first sin was? Yes, it was Adam and Eve. <laughs> I'm still working on this. Adam and Eve in the garden, and they didn't do what God told them to do. They disobeyed, didn't they? Then we talked about the first family. Can you name the first family? Who were there? Who, were, who was the dad? Adam. Who was the mom? Eve. Who were the two sons? Cain and Abel. And then something very sad happened in that family, didn't it? Do you remember what it was? The first murder. Oh, sadness. Can you imagine how Adam and Eve must have felt? But remember, Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous. And he didn't do what God said. 
And then we're going to learn about uh, a shipbuilder, Noah. We haven't had that lesson yet, but we will. But he was the first shipbuilder that we know of in the Bible that's recorded. But today, our lesson is going to be about the first skyscraper. You may know what a skyscraper is. It's a really tall building, isn't it? Well, we're going to learn the Bible talks about a skyscraper, but God wasn't happy with this skyscraper. And we're going to find out why. So I want you to get your Bible. If you need to pause, do that and go get your Bible and open it up to Genesis chapter 11. That's where our story is going to be today. Genesis chapter 11. After the flood, God told Noah and his family that they should have many children and fill the earth with people. Noah's family moved eastward from the mountains of Ararat where the ark came to rest. They decided to settle in the plains of Shinar, an area between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, which would, have, would later become the Babylonian Empire, a very great empire. The people, under the direction of Nimrod, a great grandson of Noah, decided to build a great city there. And we're going to find out in today's lesson what they also built there. Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11, and we're going to be reading Genesis 11, 1 through 9. So if you can find that, we'll begin reading. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. So how many languages were they speaking at that time? What does the Bible say in verse 1? The whole earth had one language. What does that mean? Well, it means that there was only one language. We don't know what the language was. They didn't have different languages like we do today. Spanish, English, German, Japanese. There was just one language. And they were building this city, and they were making bricks, the Bible tells us. And they were using asphalt, which is kind of what our roads are made out of. They were using that for mortar to put between the bricks to help them stick together. Now we're in verse 4. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Now think about it. What had God commanded Noah and his sons to do? To be be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. God wanted them to spread out over his whole beautiful earth, and they were not doing that. The other thing was they were very proud of themselves. We're going to be something strong. We're going to do it our way. We don't want to do it God's way. We want to build a tower. What's interesting about these towers that were built back then is the other kingdoms, the other cities, would build these towers for their idol worship. And they would build the tower very tall, and on top of the tower was where they would offer their sacrifices to their idols. So really, these people of God were trying to be like the idolatry worshipers in their areas. So in verse 5, the, it says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Do you think God was angry just because they were building a tower? I don't believe so. He, he doesn't care what we build or not build. He was angry because, number one, they were proud. They were thinking, we are so special. and We are so good. We're going to do this ourselves. And number two, they were building something that was they were trying to be like the other people around them. They, we, There's no indication that they were worshiping an idol, but they were building a tower like the idol worshipers were doing and were going to um, go up to their God in heaven with this tower, which God had not asked for or wanted them to do. So verse 7 says, Come, let us go down there and confuse their language, God says, that they may not understand one another's speech. Can you imagine what would happen if 
you and your friends were talking together and all of a sudden they started speaking another language, it would be so confusing, wouldn't it? Because you wouldn't know what they were talking about. You could not understand them. Well, this happened at the tower. The workers started babbling in different languages and basically it stopped the work because they couldn't talk to one another. They couldn't communicate with one another. So now in verse 8 and 9, it says, So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Basically, the building stopped and the people were scattered. We don't know how they were scattered, but it says the Lord scattered them and he changed their language. He was not happy with their prideful attitude. He wanted them to be humble. And so this is his way of humbling them. And when it says that it was called Babel, that word Babel uh, literally means confusion. Isn't that interesting that that's what it's named? And that that region, that city, has then became Babylon, which you'll read about a lot in the Bible. Okay, so now we're going to see if we can remember the facts that we learned in our lesson today. If you printed out the worksheet, you want to use look at this worksheet. It says the first skyscraper multiple choice activity. So we're going to work on that together right now. And we want to think about, first of all, where was our story taking place? Do you remember the name of it? The Bible says it was in the plains of Shinar. And so if we look at our, our worksheet, number one, what was the name of the land the people of the earth stopped and dwelt in as they journeyed west? What was the name? Shinar. Okay. Now, the Bible also tells us that there was how many languages? Can you remember? How many languages were there? There was just one language at that time. There wasn't multiple languages. So, number two, how many languages did the world have before Genesis 11? How many? Just one. And then number three says, what materials were they making in Genesis 11? What did they make? Well, they made brick. And then number four, what did they have for mortar? How did they put those bricks together? If you remember, it's asphalt. It's kind of like what we make our streets today. So, the tower was made out of brick and asphalt. Okay. Uh, what did they use in the place of stones? Do you remember? They used brick. Number six, what did the people want to build? Remember, it was called a tower. Something tall, something that went into heaven. Now, number seven. This is a true or false question, so think really hard about it. God approved of this aiding of this by aiding their efforts. Did God help them in their effort to build this temple? No. Remember, God was not pleased. It was not what he wanted. So, number eight, then, what did God do? To stop them from building this tower. Do you remember what he did? He confused their language. There we go. God confused their language. He made many different languages at that time. Okay? Then number nine. What happened after God stopped their ability to communicate? They, he confused their language. What happened? Did he build the tower for them? Or were they scattered across the earth? Or neither of that happened? What is your answer? Well, we know the answer. God scattered them, didn't he? Okay, let's do this. And then finally, what was the city's name after all this happened? What did they name it? Do you remember the name of it? The name was Babel. Okay, and remember, from that came the city of Babylon, the great city of Babylon. Okay, now you want to get the page that says, starts with the people wanted to build, okay? And get you some scissors uh, and some glue and a pencil to write with, because what we're going to do is put this page together. 
So if we answered the question, the people wanted to build a what? What would you put there? They wanted to build a tower, didn't they? And what did they want it, where did they want it to go to? To reach up into where? It, to reach up into heaven. And we can read that in Genesis 11, 4. So what you're going to do is cut out this tower out of the page that you printed out, and you're going to glue it on your paper like this, right in the middle. So you have a real nice little Tower of Babel. Now, turn your page over, and what we're going to do is glue our questions and answers on there. So you want to take the page that has this. I think I think it's called Triple Flip. And you want to take the page, cut it out in the square, and then cut each separate and then fold it over, okay, like this. And we've done this in class, so you should remember. Then you take your page, turn over on the back, and you want to glue this onto the back of your page. Now, after you glue it, what you want to do is flip up each flap and answer the question. How many languages were there at the time? In the beginning. So you want to write the answer right under here. You know what the answer is. It's one, isn't it? You can write a number one or you can write the word one out. Did God like the people building the tower? Well, that's a yes or no question, isn't it? Did he like building the people building the tower? No. So we're going to write no under that flap. And then this next flap says, what did the people do? What did the people do after God uh, changed their language. Well, they scattered. They scattered. They went everywhere, okay? Because, again, they had not done what God said to replenish the earth. They had just stayed in one spot. Okay, so after you glue that on, then you want to take and cut out the pyramid. I, I can't remember what it's called on the website, but you want to cut this out, and you want to fold the flap over, just like you did with the other. And you want to then glue it on the bottom. So you're going to have this one on the top, this one on the bottom. And you're going to want to glue it. And then you're going to want to answer the question, where did the people want the tower to go into? And you open up the flap. What would your answer be? Well, they wanted it to go into heaven. Okay. So that's going to be your worksheet there. We also have, if you've printed it out, we have a toolkit. And this is God's. Uh, tools for us to do God's work because they used tools to build the, the tower, didn't they? So what kind of tools do we need? Well, take your, your worksheet and you're going to take this and you're going to cut it out, but you're going to leave these flaps right here, leave these flaps, and then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut each of these flaps. See how you're going to cut it here and here and here and here, and then you can fold it on the line and you fold the flap in little flap up. I hope you can see this. <laughs> and the little flap up. And then fold the ends together and glue them so that you end up with a little toolbox. And you can color it, put your own bling on it, put stickers on it, whatever you want to do. But you've got your little toolbox. And then you want to cut out your tools. And just think about each tool. This tool is love. We're going to show love when we are doing God's work, aren't we? We're always going to be loving. And so we're going to take that, we're going to cut it out, and we're going to put it into our toolbox, okay? These are some uh, needle nose pliers, and it says, I will. What I want you to do is, maybe your parents can help you, think of some things that I will do for God. Okay, what can I do for God? Write them on those lines, and then put them in your toolbox, okay? This saw, look at that. It says, I can. Well, what can you do? There's a lot of things you can do as a child. You can do many things. Think of some things that you can do. I can take, make a card for an older friend or one of the widows or the missionaries. That's something you could do. Maybe think of something on your own and put it in your toolbox. Ooh, this is a good one. I can obey my parents. Because remember what we talked about, God said it is important to obey our parents, okay? So that's going to be a tool to do God's work. Ooh, but caution, look out, look at this one. Use caution. Satan is watching. We know that God watches over us. 
but Satan does as well. And we want to make sure that he doesn't win. That we don't let him into our lives. So we want to use caution when we're using our tools. Look at this one. We want to forgive others. When someone's done you wrong, when your sister or brother has hurt your feelings or done something mean to you, you don't need to say, hold it against them always. You want to forgive them. We always want to forgive others. Toolbox in our tool. Ooh, what about following Jesus? We always want to do, we'll never go wrong if we're following Jesus. He will always lead us to the right way, won't he? Put it in your toolbox. A good attitude. We always want to do everything we do with a good attitude. Oh, I have to go to church today. I don't want to, but I have to. That's a terrible attitude. It should be, I get to go. I want to go. And right now we all miss each other terribly. I want to go and have fellowship with my brothers and sisters and have Bible class again, right? Put it in your toolbox. This is important. We always need to pray. Prayer is important every single day. Put that in your toolbox. Look at this one. Be faithful. We want to be faithful, don't we? That means we always want to be dependent on God knows that we will be faithful to him and what he wants. Put it in your toolbox. And here we go. Bible study. What we've just done is studied God's word. We won't know what he wants us to do unless we look at what he says for us to do. So we want to always study God's word. Okay. And finally, we're going to talk about a memory verse. I know we're not going to be here with each other to uh, say the memory verse, but you can learn it. You can work on it. And what I'd like for you to do is get a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, and look up the memory verse in your Bible. The memory verse is James chapter 4 and verse 10. And I've printed it out for you like we always do in class. James chapter 4 and verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. We always want to remember the people in Babylon were not humble, were they? They did not listen to God. They did not want to do what he wanted to do. They wanted to be proud and proud of their own things instead of being proud for God. So let's all remember to be humble. So write this out on your piece of paper and remember it. And look it up in your Bible. Underline it in your Bible. I'm glad that you watched this video today. And again, I'm very sad that we're not able to be together. I hope that you have learned something. I hope that you'll share it with the friends that you know, that maybe you could work, do these activities together. And I plan on doing this every week until we get to get back together uh, in our own building, in our own classroom to be together. Again, I love you and I miss you and be well and safe.